Osmotic and hydrostatic pressure are two different types of fluid pressures which are responsible for allowing the movement of fluid from one location to a different location within some given region of space. Now let's begin by describing what osmotic pressure is, but before we actually define what osmotic pressure is, we have to discuss something called osmotic potential as well as osmosis. So let's suppose we have the following object, a marker. Now any time we take a mass, for example the marker, and we let go, we know that mass, the marker, will always move from a higher gravitational potential to a lower gravitational potential. So objects naturally move down their gravitational potential gradient from a high potential to a low potential. Now in the same analogous way, if we take a water molecule, the water molecule will always move down its water potential gradient, also known as the osmotic potential gradient. So water naturally moves from a high osmotic potential to a low osmotic potential. Now when an object, a mass, is on the ground, we define the ground to be a zero potential. And in the same exact way, we give pure water a value of zero osmotic potential. So pure water is arbitrarily assigned an osmotic potential of zero. Now, if we take the pure water and now we add some type of additional solute molecule, for example, sodium ions, then we decrease the osmotic potential of that non-pure water. So now it becomes more negative. So pure water is given a potential of zero, but any time we take pure water and we add our solute molecules now, we're decreasing the osmotic potential, we're making it more negative. Now let's suppose we have the following system. So we have a closed container as shown. On the left side, we have pure water. On the right side, we have water as well as our additional solute molecules. So these green molecules are solute molecules, for example, our sodium ions. Now, separating the left side from the right side is a semi-permeable membrane. And this semi-permeable membrane has small pores that allows the movement of water molecules, but does not allow the movement of these solute molecules. So the green dots cannot actually move across the, uh, the semi-permeable membrane, but the water molecules not, sh not shown can actually move across the semi-permeable membrane. Now, from this discussion above, we know pure water has a potential, an osmotic potential of zero. But this water that contains the solute molecules has a smaller, a more negative osmotic potential. So we have a high osmotic potential, a low osmotic potential, and what that means is water will begin to naturally move down its osmotic potential gradient from the left side to the right side in the same analogous way that the marker will move down its gravitational potential gradient. So once again, suppose the left side only contains pure water while the right side contains water along with some solute molecules shown in green. The two sides are separated by a semi-permeable membrane that only allows water to move across. Now, since pure water has an osmotic pressure and uh, an osmotic potential of zero, but the right side has a more negative osmotic potential, so a smaller osmotic potential, water will naturally flow from the left side to the right side down the osmotic potential gradient. Now, we can rephrase this. We can say that water moves from a low solute concentration, the left side, to a higher solute concentration, the right side. So this is known as osmosis. So osmosis is the process by which water naturally flows from a high osmotic potential or low solute concentration 
to a low osmotic potential or a high solute concentration. And this is described by the following diagram. So water tends to move from a high osmotic potential, the left side, which is also the low solute concentration. And it moves to the low osmotic potential or the high solute concentration, the right side. So it always naturally moves from this side to this side and this is known as osmosis. Osmosis is the process by which water naturally moves down its osmotic potential gradient. Now the next question is what exactly is osmotic pressure because osmotic pressure has to do with the process of osmosis. So now let's suppose we take the same exact situation and now we place a impermeable membrane, for example our hand, we place the hand in front of the semi-permeable membrane. So now the hand acts as the impermeable barrier. What will happen next? Well, as the water tries to move across this barrier, because we have an impermeable, uh, impermeable barrier, our hand, the water will not be able to move across. And that's because our hand, the impermeable barrier, actually creates a pressure that prevents that osmosis from taking place. And that's exactly what osmotic pressure is. Osmotic pressure is the pressure that needs to be applied to actually prevent osmosis from actually taking place. So if we block the semi-permeable membrane with some type of impermeable barrier, for example our hand, we will be applying a pressure that will ultimately stop osmosis from taking place. So the pressure that must be applied to stop the natural flow of water down its osmotic potential gradient is called osmotic pressure. So notice that the water tries to move this way but our osmotic pressure points in the opposite direction because what it does is it ultimately stops the water from actually moving across this membrane. Now what about hydrostatic pressure? What exactly is hydrostatic pressure? Well, hydrostatic pressure is slightly easier to actually explain because hydrostatic pressure is nothing more than fluid pressure. So whenever a liquid actually travels through some type of conduit, through some type of pipe, the individual liquid molecules actually collide with the walls of that conduit, with the walls of that pipe. Now when each individual liquid molecule collides with the wall, it exerts a force. And if we sum up all the individual forces that the liquid molecules exert and divided by the surface area of the wall of the conduit on which those forces actually act on, then we obtain the fluid pressure also known as hydrostatic pressure. So if we have any fluid moving along the following conduit, then the liquid molecules exert a force on the walls of that conduit as shown in this diagram. And if we take the sum of all these forces, if we find the net force due to all the liquid molecules and divided by the surface area of the wall of the conduit on which those forces act on, then we get the hydrostatic pressure. So notice these two pressures are not exactly the same thing. Osmotic pressure is simply the pressure we have to apply to prevent osmosis from actually taking place, to prevent the water from moving down its osmotic potential gradient, but hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that is a result of that movement of the fluid, the liquid, along some given conduit. It's the pressure that is created by the molecules on the walls of that conduit. So this is the difference between osmotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure.